Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and tonight we are going to be trying to replicate the taser, this little beautiful thing right here, and I'll show you what it does. So I uh, found a volunteer who would uh, be willing to do so for me. Oh, oh! I just clicked off, um, off into the distance. You saw the little line that appeared, and um, that's one thing that we're going to have to do. The other one is whenever you hit somebody with it, they need to ragdoll down like that. They need to fall down to the ground. So. That's what we're going to do tonight. I, I need to recreate this little taser and uh, create all kinds of different little things because there's there's attachments going on, there's there's ropes and, and restraints and all kinds of stuff. So let's get started. Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Welcome back to another Lamag. How did they do that? Um, and what we're doing tonight is the taser. I think I said that already, and I think I demonstrated it, but that's okay. Um, what we have left over from yesterday is the cops inmates interface, and I said that we need to kind of get rid of that. So I'm just going to um, rock this up into server storage right here. We're going to add a folder, and we're just going to call this one GUIs. GUIs just like that and we're going to take that GUI and drop it in now I did have a question inside uh, the comments yesterday asking how do you get the camera to move around just like they did whenever uh, whenever you first log in uh, the camera's kind of moving around doing cool stuff well you can actually move the local camera with twaining tw tween tweening it means like between two points and um, the way we can do that is by uh, taking the local camera whenever we first jump into the game and adding into our script if this is the first time that we uh, we were added we can add another little script that will control the camera uh, and start moving it around uh, on the first join so with that being said um, I will do one of those later but for right now I want to do the taser kind of get it out of the way so something I don't recommend ever doing is going over here to view we're going to go to uh, toolbox and I'm gonna type in taser Ta taser taser oh look at that uh, that one's by tsunami you know what I'm just gonna click on it yes we're gonna add it in now you should never use anything out of the toolbox just saying um, and that's because there are all kinds of extra little scripts right here I don't, I don't even know what these are I'm just I'm gonna delete the scripts completely uh, and I'm going to delete the pane. What else we got here? Electric weld. I'm going to delete that. I don't think I'm going to need it, but that's fine. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is let's go ahead and add a local script. And we're going to call this local taze. Boom, just like that. So um, a couple of things that we want to do. Uh, we need to get uh, when it's activated. So... Uh, this, as always, this equals script dot parent. All right. If I hit that F5 real quick, and then we we stop it real quick, it should automatically. Oh, there we go. That is in our starting inventory. We're not going to want to give that to the the inmates, but we can absolutely give it to the cops. So uh, this dot activated connect. Um, um, Taze. There we go. And then we're going to have to create a function. Function Taze. Just like that. Uh, first thing we are going to need is the mouse. So mouse equals script. Nope. Equals um, players. Nope. Not pairs. Players. No. No, no. Game dot players dot local player dot mouse. I think. Uh, print mouse. Let's just let's just see if that actually does does anything real quick. No, it didn't like it. Uh, players code primate. Mouse is not a valid member of. Oh oh oh, that's because <clears throat> I'm an idiot. We have to do uh, get mouse. Get mouse like that. Right? Right? Is that right? I have no clue if that was correct or not. Whoops. Why are we pressing F1? I don't want to press F1. 
Hey, there we go. We have an instance of an object, which is probably the mouse. So let's do uh, print mouse dot hit. Uh, no, mouse dot target, 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 target. So um, whenever you get the mouse from the local player on a local script, you can actually get the name of the target that it's hitting and stuff like that. So uh, base plate, solid wall, nice, nice. If you don't see it, it's it's right over here. Uh, window and building, base plate. Whenever you're you're trying to click yourself, it's actually got an ignore on it, so you can't tase yourself or you can't shoot yourself. Uh, the mouse just goes through you and hits uh, hits something else. So there's a spawn location. Awesome. So uh, the next thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a test dummy to like test all these things out on. So I'm going to hit F5. And inside the workspace over here, uh, well, over there at the top, I'm going to open this up. We're going to just right click, wait for my shield to disappear. I did this before and my shield was on my character and I had to delete it manually. So uh, we're going to copy the character, whatever your character's name inside studio while it's running. And then you're going to hit stop. And then inside the workspace, we're going to right click and paste into. Ta-da, there's my little character. Look, it's so awesome. Okay, so let's take a rotate and I'm going to rotate him around. Oh, I forgot to win amp. We're going to have some nice calm music because my ADHD is out of control at the moment. Ah, <sighs> there we go. Can we turn it up just a little bit? Just a little, just a little bit right there. Perfect. Ah, welcome back everyone. Okay, we're going to spin him around and we're just going to move him off to the side like that. So now he is all set up and ready to be tased. So, um, let's see, target, mouse, target. We're not gonna be able to actually affect him in any way locally, so we're gonna need, um, okay, hold on. So inside the taser, I'm going to add another one, another script, not a local script. This is gonna be a remote script, so we're gonna just call this uh, remote tase, and then we're gonna have to have some way of tasing people, so. Um, inside replicated storage, remote events. Oh, by the way, I did clean up remote events a little bit because replicated storage, we can have a whole bunch of stuff inside there that can be replicated from the server and the client and the client and the server and blah, 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 blah. So what I did is I created a folder uh, to hold multiple events. So remote event right there. And we're just gonna call this Taze. Taze, Taze. Oh, that's, that's Taz. But in, as much as I love Tasmanian devils, that's not the effect that we are going for. So um, next is Taze. We got the remote event. Okay, so inside the remote Taze, we need to get that RF. So remote function Taze equals game get services replicated storage and then we need to wait for child taze just in case it hasn't replicated yet um oh no 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 we need to wait for child remote events remote events and then wait for child taze just like that and that should give us taze so um we're gonna need some functions Function check hit um, target and let's just comment in here check to see if we hit a humanoid and then function uh, function tase this is the actual tase we want to know the player that tase them and the target so that's that's going to be two different two different players. And we can pass that in from, from up here. So, um, cause line from player to target. And I know uh, we're going to need one called ragdoll, right? Function ragdoll player. And then that should cause user to ragdoll when they get tased. 
just like that. So we're gonna need those functions. Next, we are going to say rftays dot on, on server event connect, connect, check hit. And we don't need those extra two at the end. There we go. Um, I think that's going to work, I hope. <sighs> That was a lot of scripting all at one time. And I'm sorry for going really fast. That did not mess provider. That's I could not fetch. What, what, what's that? Process asset delivery dot Roblox asset one. What? Something going on with my taser. Well, it looks fine now. So, okay. So we hit the base plate and we hit the upper torso. Upper torso, lower left leg, left foot, humanoid root part. We actually hit the humanoid root part somewhere. So anyhow, that's a uh, that's all working working. Did I hit handle? It says I hit handle somehow. Oh well. Okay, we're good. So uh, let's hit stop and. Uh, did I do that right? Dot on okay. Game dot replicated storage dot um, remote events dot taze dot on server event RF taze on server event and connect. Check hit. There we go. So on this, um, we don't want the player to continuously be able to tase, so um, we're going to put in can tase up here at the top equals true, and then whenever they activate, if can tase, then can tase equals false. Kill that to the end, put this up here. All right, and then wait for uh, timeout. Um, yeah, timeout. And then can tase equals true. So, timeout equals what, seven seconds? Takes about seven seconds to refill, uh, like recharge a, a cartridge or put a new cartridge in for a taser. I don't know what the standard time is. I, I'm just taking a guess here. But that should give us the target. So if the if we're calling the remote function, we need to get the remote function over here. So RF tase equals game uh, dot get service replicated storage uh, wait for child child wow wow I just cannot spell tonight remote events colon wait for child uh, tase there we go so once we've activated uh, instead of doing print mouse target we are going to do uh, Taze, um, RF Taze, colon, fire server, and we want to pass in the mouse dot target. Okay, so we're, we're passing in the target of the mouse that we're on right now. So over here on the remote event, we're going to check for hit. So we should get the player's name and the target. So um, we're just going to do print um, player comma player dot name comma space 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 target dot name. No, we we can just do target. There we go. That should be fine. So. <clears throat> Doing a, a couple of things with remote uh, remote events, remote functions. So, yeah, we can only do it every seven seconds. So I'm just gonna wait. Now let's hit code primate over here. 
Oh, nice. So player code primate hit the upper torso. And with the upper torso, we can check to see if it's humanoid. So, uh, first thing we want to do is check if target.parent then. Because we don't, we don't want to be able to do anything unless it's actually got a parent. So, um, hum equals target.parent colon find first child. Oh my goodness. And we want to look for the humanoid. Hum, humanoid. Or we could look for the humanoid root part, but humanoid is going to be on most things. So, if it is a human that we hit, if hum, then. So, we know that the part that we hit is definitely part of a human. So, we need to create uh, a couple of attachments and we need to find the taser that was currently shot. So, um, taser equals game dot workspace colon find find first child player dot name colon dot taser is it is it called taser is that what we named it taser I don't like taser I'm gonna call it taser like that so that should give us uh, the taser dot handle there we go so this now is the, the taser itself. Um, let's find the target. Uh, the target was the hit. So that's actually already a part. So um, target, uh, we, just, we just need to know that it's the target. So uh, attachment, okay. Attachment one, no zero equals instance dot new uh, attachment, comma, and we are going to attach it to the taser. Taser. Attachment one equals instance dot new attachment, and we're going to put it on the target or the object that we hit. It's got to be human. Uh, and then what do we need? What do we need? We need a rope. So, um, taser line equals instance dot new rope constraint. And let's go ahead and stick it inside the taser just for fun. Uh, we could stick it in the workspace, but I don't want it in the workspace because it, it'll junk up other stuff. So if we just contain it inside the taser, it should be fine. So, um, then what do we want? We want to... Um, taser line dot length equals, um, let's do target dot, oh, oh, we need to get the magnitude. Target dot position minus, um, but what was the other one? Target and taser. Taser taser dot position auto recovery file what was created dot magnitude so what this is doing um we will find the position of where we hit the attachment so like somebody's arm leg torso whatever the case may be we'll find that position in the position of our taser and we'll take the two positions, minus them from each other, and we should get dot magnitude, which should be a length of some kind. We can sit, stick that on the taser itself. So taser underscore line dot color is going to be brick color dot new uh, black. So we're gonna do that taser, taser line dot texture. Is there texture dot thickness uh, dot? Nah, we'll just do this um, dot attachment one. Oh, attachment one. Wait, what? What? Okay, hold on. 
We put the put that on the taser. We put that on the target. Okay. Okay. So, um, taser. Uh, this is right. Taser line dot attachment zero equals attachment zero, which is our variable. Taser line dot attachment one equals attachment one. So. What have we done so far? We uh, checked to see if we hit a player. If we did, then we're going to go ahead and create two attachments. One is attached to the taser, one is attached to the target, only if it's an actual human. Then we create an instance of two attachments. Uh, we create the attachments. Then we created a rope constraint and we attach the rope constraint in between the two points. The length of the, the two points is going to be the target's position minus the taser's position and the magnitude. And then we change the color of the rope itself into black. We add the uh, attachments to the rope on the attachments that we created. Is that it? Um, wait for seven seconds. No, wait for five seconds. And then we need to taser taser line destroy and attachment zero destroy and attachment one destroy so we need to destroy the attachments in the line that we just created hopefully hopefully that works i don't i don't know if that's going to work or not and that's been 21 minutes jeez so uh oh taser is not a valid member of the model workspace dot code primate why not player uh workspace because code primate is already in the game uh-oh so game dot workspace find first child player dot name let's do this let's do player dot character dot taser try that because the first code primate that we copied over didn't have one right so oh oh i'm not sure that we can do that um let's look on the server itself go to server side um game dot players dot dot players dot code game dot players dot code dot character oh i need to print that print uh oh why did that oh i got a i got a syntax there Okay, so we are getting code primate back. So, um, if we get character dot taser, we get the taser. And this is on the server side, right? We are currently looking at the server. Look at this. Uh, okay, let's hit stop. So what did I do wrong? Let's do the check hit. Oh, 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 my goodness. Okay. Check it, player, target. We actually need this in a different function. Taze, player, target. So this is where we check if human. Oh, we don't actually need to check if we're human because we should already be checking it up here. Boom, if human. There we go. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a little messy. That's fine. And go back down here. We don't need this. And we can bring all this in nice and simple. Oops, one, two, there we go. So, um, down here inside Taze, print player, comma, target. Let's try that. And we can always open it up over here on the right-hand side under the inspector. 
So like if we look under the second code primate, this should be me because, no, nope. is this me? There we go. You can see my taser pop in and out right there. So if I click, I've broken something. Help, help, what did I break? <clears throat> okay, let's go back over here. If we activated, um, let's take out the weight for a second. Print worked just like that. This is inside the local. So then if I click, I should be able to do worked, 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 worked. Okay. Cool. Stop. Go back over here. So, print worked. What I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm adding little um, breakpoints so I can see where my code is breaking. So the remote is getting called. Let's go down here. Did we call it correctly? If Hume didn't do this. <laughs> Worked. Hit the upper torso. Okay, so we're actually getting all the way down here. Code primate and target. So, I guess the uh, the easiest way to solve this problem would be going into here, and we're just going to change this to code dummy. There we go. Because you're never going to have two characters who are named the exact same, right? I don't think. Maybe not. So we hit in the upper torso. So we are hitting. So. Um, let's go ahead and take this out right here. And I just want to see, oh, oh, silly goose, taser, uh, taser line dot visible equals true. I wonder if it was hitting that whole time and we just couldn't see it because I'd forgotten to make it visible. That would be hilarious. Okay. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. Look at, would you look at that? Look at that. Oh man. If I had started writing, I would have known about it. So, we we now have uh, a taser. Kind of. It's it's close. It's not exact. But, that is definitely a tase. Okay, we, let's, let's put up the uh, elasticity of the, the rope. Taser line dot resistance. This tuition equals one equals ten. I think it only goes up to one. Um, taser. What else can we do with the taser line? Um, archivable class name color current distance current distance enabled length length. Should we, uh, once, once it's hit for like two seconds, um, let's do, let's do this just for fun. Wait, uh, one second and then taser line dot length equals taser, taser line dot length. Plus, oh, I guess I could just do uh, plus equals, right? Plus equals. You know what? That's dumb. I'm not doing that. Not right now. <laughs> okay, we're going to wait for five seconds. Destroy the line. Uh, so we do have a taser. We need to um, 
play the sound, but I, I want it to play locally. So it's only if we hit a human over here. So the Cantes doesn't matter. Um, if game dot right, if mouse dot target dot get parent dot humanoid no wow what am I doing target dot parent colon find first child humanoid then so if mouse dot target dot parent dot find first child humanoid then we're going to play the sound what does this sound sound like let's uh let's go over here play oh that is that is a horrible sound that is that is rank I don't like that at all and let's not loop it let's get the loop out of there looped no um playback speed five what happens if we do five Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, mm-hmm. I like that. Let's do let's do point five, so it's not so loud. Very nice, very nice. I like it. So let's get a reference to the sound. Um, let's see. Tay's sound equals um, this dot handle dot sound we're just going to do uh taze no 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 taze sound wow wow taze sound play just like that we should only have to play it once right so let's see so if we're if we're over here messing around and we try and shoot Wow. Nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. But after seven seconds, we look at the person and... Ooh, nice. Now I don't like that it, it that's, that's a really long time. Let's do, just do one second, and then we'll destroy the line. Because I, I don't want somebody to, like, zap them and then start running backwards and take off with them, you know? We, we might even put that down some so it's not restraining the person. Ooh, still, still had a little bit of a delay there. So let's go to remote taser. We're going to wait for 0.25, a fourth of a second. Fourth of a second should be okay. So, blink. One. Oh, nice. Oh, I love it so much. That is that is great. Now we need to ragdoll, ragdoll. So, uh, let's go to the remote taze. Um, we already know who we're going to ragdoll. So, let's just do uh, ragdoll target we know that the target is the player right player dot character taser handle target no target is the thing that we hit so target dot um parent oh no 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 we need to pass in a player don't we no 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 we can, we can pass in the parent because the parent is the humanoid, right? We checked to see that the target.parent exists. And if the human equals target parent find first child humanoid, then we tase. So we know that this part, its parent is a human or it is the start of a humanoid. So now we need to ragdoll player. Oh gosh. Okay. So control Z. Good luck with this. This is going to be a model. So what do, what do I need? Um, if we look at code dummy, um, we need to get all the descendants, right? 
And then as we start looking at like left foot, what does this left foot consist of? What is that? That's a motor six. So let's get a list of all descendants. So, um, current angle, desired angle, max velocity. Can we, can we just disable it? Does that, does that do anything? Or do we need to destroy it? Parent. If, if I disable it, hold on. So, um, hold on. Let's, uh, let's just grab my, the whole model here. Um, how does this work? Okay. Let's move you up. Let's go ahead and rotate you backwards like this. And then I'm going to take your head. Where's the head? Human head. I need the head. Boom, right there. I'm going to lock this in place. This is going to be anchored. Okay, but your head should have a motor on it, the neck. So if we hit F5, it's currently enabled. Right? If I disable your neck, do you go, does it go limp? Hold on. Let's go into the workspace, go into the code dummy, and let's go to the head. And neck. Disabled. Archivable. Whoa. Whoa, what happened? Oh, I deleted it on, on this side. Something happened. Okay, so what happens when we go to the server side? Server side, go to workspace, code dummy. Where's code dummy? There you are. Where's your head, buddy? If we disable it. Oh, it breaks. That breaks. We can't we can't be breaking things. Cause that that doesn't work. Oh, oh no. We've broken it. So, hmm, well, stop, and let's hit F5, play. So, um, okay, so in order to do this, let's go to, um, let's go to workspace, go to code dummy, and we're going to the head. Head. There's the neck. We don't want to disable it. But current angle 90. Wow. Zero. Uh, desired angle 20. Current angle 20. Five. Zero. Wow. Wow. Max velocity is 20. Zero, zero, zero. Huh. How in the world does this work? I'm, I'm trying to figure out how a motor 6D works. Well, what if we were to create another joint? Let's go ahead and add in a joint. Can we add in a socket? A uh, ball socket constraint. We can do that. And what's the neck attached to? The neck is attached to upper torso and head. So uh, with the ball joint, uh, attachment one, upper torso. No, it's it's got to have attachments, doesn't it? Hmm. Hmm. Stop. All right, hang tight. I'm gonna I'm gonna look up some some ragdolling here. One second. Okay, well, I, I had a little bit of fun uh, trying to figure this out. And, um, okay, so back to the script part. We ragdoll, we find the human, uh, we have to do player.humanoid that requires neck equal, equals false. So if the head becomes detached from the body, you die. Um, and that's not what we want. And every single one of the ragdolls that I was watching or looking at, um, they take the the all the joints 
uh, and they create attachments. They create ball sockets, and then they kill the player and break all the all the motors. Well, you can't break the motor without breaking the joint. So I thought to myself, well, what if we just had it do it like disable it for a, a second? So what I did is I did all parts equals game dot workspace dot code dummy get this in. So this is this is going to be the player themselves. Um, we can just do player like this player. And then we are going to do a for loop um, for index of objects in I pairs all parts do print the part. Uh, if it is a motor, these these were just test uh, test strings in there. So let me take these out real quick. Take that out. There we go. Um, if the part in there is a motor 60, then uh, the part dot enabled equals false. So. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to attach a ball joint here and as you can see here the um the the ball joint can be um found with part zero and part one so instance dot new uh ball socket constraint and we're going to place it um onto part one. So O dot part part zero. So everything that we're in, it should have a part zero. So this is the motor. Part zero is going to hold the actual ball socket. <coughs> so we have to create two attachments. ATT one equal, uh, ATT zero equals attachment. Uh, no, equals Instance dot new uh, attachment, and we're going to place that into. Um, oh gosh, this is this is going to be hard. So part one equal uh, part zero equals o dot part zero. Part one equals o dot part one. And then we're going to do instance ball socket, and we're going to place that onto part zero uh, we need to have two attachments so attachment zero is going to be on part zero and att1 equals instance dot new uh, attachment and we're going to put that on part two <coughs> no part one then we can say um oh uh new joint equals ball socket constraint uh, new joint dot attachment zero equals att zero and then we can do new joint dot attachment one equals att one so hopefully that should now it I'm only gonna be able to do this once but once we re-enable all the sockets it should work whoa that was crazy <laughs> wow okay <laughs> i kind of like it I'm, I'm not gonna lie that's that's kind of what it feels like when you get tased all right uh if you ever have to go through training for something like that that is definitely the feel of a taser right there ah <laughs> all right hold on all right, real quick, huge shout out to uh, Shabu, Shabo Nino, Shabo Nino. I'll leave a link to his uh, his YouTube in the description down below. But in his video, he's got this beautiful piece of code right here. But it's only connected to when the humanoid dies, and I don't want to I don't want to do it whenever the humanoid dies. But I'm going to try and take his code that he's got here, um, where he's creating a socket, which is the ball socket constraint the two attachments, which is exactly what we had. He joins them to the two parents, uh, and then he joins um, uh, joint.parent. What? Joint. Where, where's the joint is a... Oh, joint.parent. Okay. And then he destroys the joint. So... Oh, he's not attaching the ball socket 
to a part, he's attaching it to where the joint is. But if, if that's going to be the parent, hang tight. Okay, okay, that's sneaky. That's kind of sneaky what he did. Um, so the attachment 1.c frame equals joint.co. The attachment 2.c frame equals joint.co. So then he does, uh, oh, okay, okay, we got this, we got this. Okay, <laughs> it kind of worked. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it definitely tases, but we're, we're still attaching pretty pretty hard there. So um, let's, let's go ahead and just tase the foot. There we go. And see how he, he he's kind of just I don't know it it feels feels a bit weird so let's go ahead and kill that uh, that tase part so um, let's see we're going to grab this and put that afterwards so let's see what happens when we do that. <clears throat> Now the the parts are definitely not working the way that I thought they were going to. Oh, he, he keeps falling down because he's an angle. Well, let go. Why is it? Why is it not going? Oh, we're not destroying the parts. We're we're calling. There we go. So 0.25 seconds, and then we'll destroy the parts. But that that should ragdoll him in the. The taser should let go. Nice. Oh my gosh. Okay, we got a bit of weirdness going on, but that's that's okay. We've Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not quite what we were going for. But you know what? Every every once in a while it is a good one. Oh, oh, he just went flying. Where did he go? Oh gosh, he's way, uh, way up there. So, for the most part, that is a good tase. Uh, now I haven't tested it at all, so um, let's go back over here. I'm gonna show you what I did. So we had tase player, um, this is all in good. I'm going to give it a little bit of space so we know the distance in between the functions. So down here, under the ragdoll, the first thing that we wanted to do is we we are passing in the model, the humanoid, or the human. So we want to set the humanoid.neck required equals false. Because if you if you remove any of the parts uh, and it's on the neck, it, they're going to die. All parts equals player colon get descendants. This is going to get you everything in that model. So uh, I do a loop, uh, index part in pairs all parts. So what this is going to do is it's going to cycle through every single thing. Um, if the part that it's looking at is a motor, then we set part zero uh, equals part dot part zero. So inside this motor, if we look, there's a part right over here. There's a part zero and a part one. So then what we do is we create an attachment. Uh, sorry, we create a, a new ball socket and we place it into the part which is the motor so once we've done that we take attachment one we create a new attachment and we set it to part part zero uh attach oh sorry attachment zero attachment one uh we do the same thing we create a new attachment put it into the part and then for attachment zero dot c frame we want to use the joint c zero so there's actually there's a C frame for the uh, the motor itself. So C zero is the first C frame. C one's the second C frame of the two joints. So then uh, the new joint dot attachment zero, um, which is our ball socket, is the attachment that we created on the first part, and attachment one is the attachment that we created on the second part. Then. Uh, we want to set the new joint dot limits enabled to true. That way, it doesn't it doesn't go past a certain limit. Uh, the new joint twist enabled we set to true, so it can't snap off. And then joint dot name equals tasered joint. And then we set the uh, part, which is currently the motor, to disabled. I don't know if that actually breaks it or destroys it or not, because whenever we destroyed it in the workspace, it disappeared inside the workspace over there. But 
Um, we wait for five seconds, and then after the five seconds is up, we go back through that entire list of descendants that we got at the very beginning, and we check to see if it's a motor. If it is, we enable it to true, and if it's a tased joint, which is a ball socket, we destroy it. And I should actually do this in reverse order. We want to destroy the ball joints and then enable the motors. So, that is how to create a taser. <clears throat> And I left it for five seconds. So you can only tase every seven seconds, but you can definitely hit for more. And I don't know why he's bouncing. If anybody can tell me why why he bounces like that, I would I would love to know. Uh, because I don't think it's supposed to work like that. But that's it. We we made a taser, and I'm happy for it. Um something else that we gotta do is inside the team scripts. Um, if we have somebody join the teams, so let's do this, uh, to blue team dot player added colon connect, connect, um, cop INV. Um, let's, let's do... Yeah, cop INV, cop INV. So we're gonna create uh, a couple of things here. So, uh, function, yeah, we can put the function down here, but I don't I don't want to, I wanna come up here. Uh, function, cop, uh, cop INV. We need to give the taser if the person joins the, uh, joins the cops and we need to remove the taser if the, they leave the the cops so the function cop inv we are going to check to see if the user has it already in their backpack um so this should give us the player name and um let's do has taser equals uh player dot what, what is it backpack backpack find first child taser if has taser then do nothing do nothing else um let's do Replicated storage. Do we already have replicated storage? Um, server, service storage. Game dot. Uh, let's do new taser equals game colon get service server storage. Um, and we, are we going to call it weapons? Weapons dot weapons dot taser club. So, uh, let's go down here and take this out. We're going to do a cut. We're going to go into server storage because we don't want it in replicated storage. Replicated storage, uh, hackers, uh, uh, exploiters could pull it from us. So, we're going to paste into... Uh, no, we're going to make a new folder. We're going to call it weapons. And we're going to uh, paste into... Paste into... There we go, so there's our taser. So, we are going to clone a new taser. Uh, new taser dot parent equals um, player dot backpack. I think that's it, is that it? Hold on. If, uh, if we don't have it and I select cops, oh, I don't have my interface up anymore. So, um, we need to control the interface. How much time we got? We got five minutes. So, let's go to server-side scripting, server. Oh, that's script services, isn't it? That is that is not, there we go. We, we want it in server storage, not server script services. Um, team script game dot players dot player added connect first uh let's do t 
team select GUI. So whenever a, a player first comes into the game, we can give them a game select GUI. So function game select, oh no, it's team select, isn't it? Team select GUI player. And from here, we can go into, man, I don't like doing that constantly. So let's just say uh, SS, no, server, server storage. And man, that's, that's just as hard. Let's just call it S storage, S storage equals game colon get service server storage, just like that. And that way, anytime that we need to reference server storage, we can just call this. So, has taser. Da, 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 da. All of this right here, we can go server storage dot weapons dot taser dot clone. And then uh, down here, we should do a local on that, you know, but it's okay. I don't want to. Um, team select. Why, why did I put it in quotes like that? That's horrible. Horrible code. Jeez. It's team select, not game select. Team select GUI. So we should have the player. So then, um, new, wait, new taser? Not new taser, GUI. We need to replicate the GUI. So, uh, S storage dot GUIs dot GUI select team, GUI select team, clone, just like that. We need to say new GUI equals, and then new GUI dot parent equals player dot player GUI. Is it player GUI? I think. I guess we have to wait until the character's added, don't we? No, we don't. We don't have to wait until the character's added. We already have a, a player, so we can just throw throw the throw it on the player, right? Boom. There we go. Cops. Play. Did I get a, a taser? Backpack is not a valid member of players.code primate. What what is? Players code primate. Backpack, it's right there. Backpack, backpack. Oh, I got a capital P. What? Why didn't you guys tell me? You didn't didn't tell me down in the comments. Code, you put a capital P on backpack. There we go. Try that. Give that a shot. So, cops play. Backpack is not a valid member. Where did I do backpack again? Oh, there we go. Dang it! I did capital P's twice. Again, you guys missed. Leave it in the comments. Tell me, hey, code, you forgot backpack. I, I need you shouting at me. 57 minutes. We're almost to an hour again. There we go. Got a taser. Oh, you're ragdolled. Nice. Nice. Okay. <laughs> He's flopping around. I I don't I, I I can't get over that. That's awesome. So let's go into teams. Um we don't want to be able to taser uh taser anything but criminals. Because if they're an inmate, you're not tasing them because they're already on the inside. So uh stop. Let's let's test this real quick. If I choose inmate, I should not get a taser, right? Right? I think. So um, let's do inmates play. No taser. Nice. Okay. Um, so let's go back into that taser itself. Where's where was it? It's under weapons taser remote tase. There we go. <clears throat> Check hit player, target parent if humanoid, then target do, 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 if human. Okay. If, no, no, this is not, this is the player that shot, this is the target that hit. So if human and hu, uh, and target dot parent dot team team color equals red. 
Oh gosh. Brick color. Actually, yeah, color dot new. Bright red. So, there we go. Now, I don't think this is going to work because technically he's not on a team. So we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to do a little bit of stuff here. Let's go to test. We're going to run three player module module. Oh my goodness, we're at one hour. So this this might this might run over just a second, but uh you know what? You could probably figure out how to make it uh, work with the teams. Okay, so there's the server. Where's the clients? Come on, clients. Yeah, here they come. Ooh, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to select one to be cops. You get a taser. I'm going to select one to be inmates. You get nothing. And uh, I'm going to select the other one to be an inmate, but this inmate is going to run off and become a criminal. Boom, you're now a criminal. So, can I hit you with the taser? Uh-oh, uh-oh. I think I missed. <laughs> wow, how did how did you miss from like two feet away? Nope, nope, that didn't work. Okay, let's go look. Uh, team color is not a m model. Okay, so. Um, let's do this. So, if it is a human, then we need to check the team. So, game dot players dot uh, colon find first child target dot parent dot name uh, and then dot team color, right? If team color equals bright red brick color dot new bright red then then we can taze and but only if they're uh, a bright red okay so um i need to actually clean this up so oh and when i do clean that up that's going to mess this up so let's just take the whole of check hit and then clean up there we go hands off good Taze remote, check hit. It took everything away from us. Oh, did it? Yeah, it did. Paste. So this this is a quite a bit of a long line. So I'm just gonna say team equals, and we're gonna take this and paste it there. And if team equals brick color bright new. Hopefully, oh, I forgot. Stop, 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 stop. Go back, 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 back. Stop. And let's go back into remote taze equals equals symbol. There we go. Okay. So test. Uh, and we we're still gonna leave the three players because I need to have one cop, one inmate, one criminal. Team equals. Um, by the way, you could, like like I said, whenever you first initialize some kind of variable, oh, you can always use local. For some reason, I don't. Uh, I think it's just habit, and it's a horrible habit to have. It's a bad, bad habit, but here we go. Okay, so the first one, you're going to be a cop, get a taser. You're going to be an inmate. You go over here. You're going to be an inmate, and you are going to run to the end, boom, and become a criminal. So there's our criminal. And case. Oh yeah. Yeah, look at you go, buddy. You fell down, that's funny. All right, now we're going to try. Oh, oh. It signaled like we had tased, but no tasey tase. No tasey tase. Oh, that's beautiful. All right. No tasey tase? No. Nope. No, taser tase. We're going tasey crazy. Come on, T taser, taser, taser. There we go. Oh, that is beautiful. All right, let's clean it up. Thank you everyone for watching this ep episode of uh, Lamag. How'd they do that? Let's make a game, H T 
D T. No, H D T D T. H D T T. How'd they do that? <laughs> Jailbreak. How to make a taser. Um, also, a special shout out to Stickmaster Luke because I know for a fact that that, uh, that taser that we we're using. That was one of your original designs, so I don't I don't want to take credit where credit isn't due, um, and everyone who has helped out so far in my journey, uh, Alvin Blocks, you're you're amazing. Uh, huge shout out to the publishers who saw my potential as being a, a programmer and created the book, the Advanced Roblox Coding Book. Uh, that was me. I, I wrote the book. It's amazing. If you're looking for more coding. Uh, I highly recommend it. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it on Barnes and Noble. You can find it at Walmart. And you can find it at Target. And just Google the Advanced Roblox Coding Book, and you'll find it somewhere. Love you guys very much. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end of the videos, like a good YouTuber does. But it's your choice. If you want to, go for it. If not, that's cool too. Have a great night, and we'll talk to you very soon. <sighs> Outro. Want some new merch? Check out teespring.com. Outro.